Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today I'm going to go through this problem from complex analysis. So we are going to assume that f is holomorphic in a connected open set omega, and we are also going to assume that for some a and b not both zero, a times the real part of f plus b times the imaginary part of f is equal to zero. We are going to prove that f is constant. Now if this is the type of video you enjoy, and you find this helpful, please consider liking and subscribing because it really helps me to keep making these videos. Okay, without further ado, let's get going. So to do this, because f is holomorphic, we are going to write f as some function u plus some function iv, where both u and v are going to be real valued functions. Okay, so that means this expression, a times the real part of f plus b times the imaginary part of f equals zero, that can be rewritten as a times u plus b times v is equal to zero. Okay, now what we're going to be doing is we're going to take the derivative of that expression with respect to both x and with respect to y. So with respect to x, we are going to get a times u sub x plus b times v sub x is equal to zero. And if we were to then also take the derivative with respect to y, we would find that 0 is also equal to a sub a times u sub y plus b times v sub y. Now, because we are assuming that this is holomorphic, it's going to satisfy the Cauchy-Riemann equations, which are essentially that u sub x equals v sub y, and u sub y is equal to negative v sub x. So, we can convert one side to become in terms of the other side. So we are going to rewrite the a u sub y plus b v sub y in terms of derivatives with respect to x. So that side is then going to give us 0 is equal to a times u sub y becomes a negative v sub x, so we have a minus a v sub x plus b v sub y becomes just a u sub x, and that is going to be equal to a u sub x plus b v sub x. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for u sub x. So if we were to subtract the b u sub x over to the other side and then subtract the b v sub x to the other side, we get a minus b times u sub x is equal to, um, we have negative times a plus b v sub x, and that is going to be equal to both sides. Now what we have to do is we have to figure out, is it possible for all of this to work out? So the way we're going to do this is we know that a and b are not both zero. So we're going to have two cases. So case one, a is equal to zero. So if a is equal to zero, what does this mean? Well then that means that we have negative b u sub x equals negative b v sub x. Okay, so we have that, which if a is 0, that means b cannot be 0, so that means we can cancel out our, uh, we can cancel out the minus b's, and that means we are left with just u sub x equals v sub x. Okay, how does this help us? Well, if u sub x equals v sub x, we know from our Cauchy-Riemann equations that that means that's also equal to v sub y, which is also equal to negative uh, u sub y. So all of those together tell us that everything has to be essentially the same with the exception of the u sub y term, which is negative. All right. We can then take that and plug that into our original Cauchy-Riemann equations, and then that tells us that a u sub x plus b v sub x, that had to be zero, but we know a is zero, so that term disappears, so b times v sub x equals zero. Well, we know b isn't zero, so that means that v sub x has to be zero, so everything has to be zero, and if everything's zero, that means that f is constant, because if all the derivatives are zero, then that means that u is a constant and v is a constant, and f is just adding two constants together. So that means if a is equal to zero, we just end up with a whole bunch of constantness. Now what we're going to do is we are going to assume that a is not zero, okay? So here we go. If a is not zero, what would we do here? 
Well, here what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at uh, this line. Well, we're going to basically go back to this set of equations again. And if a is not zero, we're going to, uh, whoops, one line off. We're going to be looking at these equations here. So if a is not zero, then we're going to be able to do some stuff with this to be able to get everything to work out nice. So if a is not zero, that means we are able to divide everything by a. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to go through and rewrite that by dividing everything by a. So we get u sub x plus b over a v sub x equals zero. And we can then also take the other side, um, which is that zero equals negative a v sub x plus b u sub x. And we can solve this for v sub x. So a v sub x equals b u sub x. We can again divide both sides by a, so we get v sub x equals b over a times u sub x. We're going to take this and plug it in right here, and when we do that, we're going to get u sub x plus b over a times b over a, so that's a b squared over a squared v sub x equals zero. Oh, whoops, nope, not u sub x there sorry, not v sub x, that's a u sub x. So that means that we get one plus b squared over a squared u sub x equals zero, and we can multiply both sides by a squared because a is not zero, that's not going to just change everything to zero. So that means we get a squared plus b squared times u of x equals zero. Now, because a is not zero, and because b squared is going to be a positive number because b was real, that means that this side is a positive number, which then means that u sub x has to be zero. So if u sub x equals zero, then that means that v sub y is also zero. But if we just take the u sub x equaling zero, then that means that a u sub x plus b v sub x, that had to be zero. a u sub x is now zero. So b times v sub x has to be zero, but b wasn't zero. So that means that v sub x has to be zero. And we are going to be back at this starting point that we had again, where we are going to again see that f is going to have to be a constant again, no matter which case we're dealing with. So we have just shown, or at least gone through all the work, to show that f is going to have to be a constant function in this case. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please consider liking and subscribing. And please let me know what other type of videos you would like to see me do in the comment section down below. Have a great day and good luck with the rest of your math.